Hello and welcome to the Rising Lotus Qigong. My name is Christina. And I'm Peyton. And we're delighted to be back for our third season with you, guiding you through the practice of Qigong for health and wellness. In this season, we're going to be practicing Qigong, uh, static Qigong, as well as dynamic Qigong. So it'll be uh, stationary postures in the beginning. And then we're going to add in some moving postures in there, taking at least one step left and right. The benefits of this practice of learning Qigong are many, but as we mentioned, health and wellness is the primary reason that we are here sharing this information with you. Consistent practice of Qigong helps in a variety of ways, including increasing circulation, which is, uh, promotes better oxygenation of blood. It helps to relax the body and activate the parasympathetic system so that we come out of an, a feeling of stress and tension into a more relaxed state of peace. Um, it also helps with mental focus. It helps with the muscles. It helps with the bones. It helps with just about everything. What I love about doing Qigong and a little bit of Tai Chi during that time frame of my practice is that it gives me a sense of connectivity to my breath and my body. It helps me to relax. It helps me to have a sense of well-being for myself, letting today's stresses and um, you know, just all the way around, just have that good, happy feeling on the inside. Feel good. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> makes me feel good. Um, I love Qigong and Tai Chi because it's a practice that I can do just about anywhere. Even if I'm at home in a small space inside of my living room, and that's all I have time for today is to be indoors and do a practice, I can do that. Or if we're traveling and we're mm -hmm. out um, in a park or if we're um, outdoors somewhere, the mountains or the beach, I mean, just really anywhere. In your office, uh, there's there's been times where people tell me that they do pulling down heavens at their place of work so that they can relax after a stressful moment. So you don't have to have special clothing and you don't have to have special tools or equipment to practice Qigong or Tai Chi. Wherever you are, you can take your practice with you. I really appreciate that about it. And I do too. One thing to remember, if you are going to add some of the stepping or the dynamic uh, Qigong is what we like to call it, um, you may want to have at least uh, four or five feet around, at least be able to take a single step to the left and a single step to the right. Yes, absolutely. You want to clear, clear the way of any tables that you might walk into um, without intention, of Toys. course. Or <laughs> look for those Legos, right? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Make sure your space is clear so that you have a, a comfortable place to work, um, do your practice in, and to relax completely. So with that said, are you ready to jump into practice? Sure. Let's begin. Let's start. Let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, we're going to begin our practice by bringing both of our feet together. Nice upright posture. Breathe into the lower belly. Your palms are out here on your thighs. This is our Tai uh, Wu Ji posture. What we're going to do now is we're going to flex our knees just a little bit. And you're probably going to have to flex them just a little bit more than you think uh, is as comfortable for you. Um, flex a little bit so that you can feel your uh, heels activate. And then roll yourself forward just a little bit to activate the balls of the feet. If in this position you feel a little bit unbalanced, it is totally okay to take a look down. You can widen up a couple of inches between to give you a little bit more stability. Just remember to sink back down on the knees. And then next we're going to roll our tailbone underneath, which will lower, uh, which will, uh, on your lower abdominal area, it will add a little bit of attention so that you can feel your hips. We're going to lift the top of the head, nice erect spine, good, relax those shoulders, hands by the thighs again, just running through the positions as we change, good. From here we're going to shift our weight onto our right foot, lift the heel of the left foot off the ground, and then we're going to pick that those toes up and just set them out about shoulder width apart, heel sits down onto the floor. From this point, we're going to take a look down at our feet, make sure that our feet are pointed forward. They can toe out just a little bit, maybe about 10, 15 degrees. Flex our knees again. Take another look and make sure that we can see the shape of a house. We got our lower legs, which is our side walls that keep the house and the roof up. 
And then we got our roof here coming into the hips. Good. Flex those knees a little bit more. Roll the tailbone underneath. Lift the top of the head, relax our shoulders. Hands come out by our sides, fingertips down into uh, the earth. Nice and extended. Just breathe right here. I think what we're looking for is a great feeling. I'm just going to paraphrase. So what we're looking for is a feeling of grounded and stretching our weight into the earth by sitting down and letting the knees bend, but stretching and elongating the spine so that you feel that you're lifting right through the middle and pushing out somewhat from the top of the head. So you want a feeling of lift right through the center of the body, but the sides of the body are still uh, draping down towards the ground and connecting into earth. So we would call this a ready position. You're standing in your center and Wuji means that basically you're standing in the center and we've moved into a ready state, ready for the next step, whatever that might be. Yep. We call this position the Taiji posture. So we went from our legs together in a nice column, which is Wuji, ready for everything moved out into our Taiji posture and now we'll be, be ready to begin our uh, Qigong practice. From this point forward let's do three pulling down heavens. What we want to do is we want to slowly activate our fingertips, palms going down into the earth, flex our knees a little bit more. We're going to inhale, arms coming up, Moving up to the shoulders, at the shoulders, shoulders are relaxed, palms turn over, coming up overhead. Excellent. From this point forward, just relax from the fingertips down through the arms, hands coming down, exhaling. Good. Keep moving, inhaling, arms coming up. Palms turn over at the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed. Exhale, relax from the arms, down through the shoulders, through the body, down into the legs, all the way down. Last one. Inhaling. Palms coming up, turning over. Shoulders are relaxed, exhale. And coming back down into our Taiji posture. Relaxing, breathing into the lower belly. That felt really good. What are what are some of the things that we can um, address with pulling down heavens? What are what's it good for? Get a long, uh, full uh, inhale and exhale. It allows so it allows our diaphragm to fully uh, contract and relax, which also activates our parasympathetic nervous system, allowing the chemicals of the body to say it's okay to relax and to be present during that, uh, during the movement. Yeah, I can definitely feel as I inhale energy running through the body and stretching the tissues and filling all the way up to my fingertips. And then as I exhale, I can definitely feel that downward flow of breath. And even as my you know, my hands are moving, I can feel that downward flow of energy from my head through, if I can relax enough, all the way down yep. into my feet. And that feels really peaceful. So um, it, it seems like uh, we might want to go over what some of the key points are to get a, get the most that you can from a pulling down heavens. Okay. Pulling down heavens, like Peyton mentioned before, you want to make sure that your knees stay out over your feet. So sometimes when we're doing our practice, we forget about our knees and um, they begin to sink and sag into the middle. So what we wanna do is always make sure that the knees come out over our feet, pretty much straight down. So like he said, you're building a house, you have that square and then the triangle that comes up. So check your knees occasionally through your practice and make sure that you're not sagging the knees into the middle because we would want to avoid any type of injury there. So making sure that the knees are open means that you have a lot of chi that's able to flow through, through the yin meridians that come up from the feet and into this lower belly area, which we call the lower dantian. From there, we want to take a look and make sure that the tailbone is tucked under. And so I'm going to stand sideways so you can see that. 
And so if you normally stand up like this, you're going to sit to the point where you push your waist to the back and you round the back a little bit. That's naturally going to bring the lower belly in. And that's what Peyton mentioned by saying, um, back to the front, but pace, um, bringing in a little bit of tension on the abdomen. So when we sit back, it takes those lower abdomen muscles and pulls them towards the spine. So what that's gonna do is gonna create this nice open movement in the torso and the shoulders to allow energy, breath, blood, and everything to flow through freely. Now, another common um, area to look, look at when you're learning how to do pulling down heavens is the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when we inhale, we wanna keep the shoulders down. A lot of people at the beginning wanna lift the shoulders so that the arms can reach way up into the sky. But what that does is it kinda of cuts the flow of chi at the neck. So what we wanna do is keep those shoulders down so that the hands can come down freely. So maybe we'll practice three more of these. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. All right. We go back into a nice uh, Tai Chi posture. Knees are flexed. Check your feet. Your heels and the balls of your feet should be flat on the floor. Elbows are rolled out just a little bit to create some space in your armpits. Relax the shoulders. And let's do an inhale. And the hands come up all the way up to shoulder height. Palms turn over. Continuing up above the body, one long inhale, relax those shoulders. Exhale, relax, arms, shoulders, sinking down into the hips, legs, and feet. Good, inhaling. Palms turn over, relax the shoulders, and exhale, relaxing from the top, down through the body, down through the legs and feet. Last one, inhaling. And exhaling. Excellent. I think it's time that we warm up the body a little bit more. I feel a lot more relaxed after this trip. That's good, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's do a little, maybe some yin yang spinning. We'll warm up the waist a uh, little bit. That sounds good. Okay. All righty. So let's slowly just twist our torso from left to right. Remember to keep your knees pointed forward. Feet are flat on the floor. And just allow the arms to relax and hang. No need to go really, really fast. Just to let your body just continually open to each side. Good. And let's start to uh, slow down. Just allow the body to naturally and easily come back to a stationary position. Excellent. And yin yang spinning is great to um, loosen up the spine on the rotation. I guess you would call it on a horizontal level versus vertical. Most of the time throughout the day, we're working on a vertical plane, stepping forward, lifting this way. And we don't do a lot of twisting motion to the side. But yin yang spinning helps to create more space between the vertebrae which in and of itself, that movement increases circulation, but it also stimulates the nerves. And so if people are having, experiencing any type of tightness in the hips yep. or in the waist or in the back or in the, in the shoulders or in the, the neck, neck, yin yang spinning is really just a very gentle way of beginning to break up any stagnation that's around the spine and increase the flow of blood, lymph, um, cerebral spinal fluid and stimulating the nerves. So even a, a person who might have any type of arthritis um, is a great way to just create some gentle movement that will over time um, create some great benefit. Yes, it will allow the spine to um, release any tension around the spine, creating space between the, uh, in, in the, the vertebrae of the spinal column 
which then will radiate outward into the body. So if you, um, you might have noticed that you might have had some snap, crackle, and pops a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Everything's coming back into alignment. That's great. Let's build on that energetic motion. So we've, we've gone through the steps of putting the body in the right posture, and we've done pulling down heavens to bring us into our practice, and then we've done yin-yang spinning to help break up stagnation along the spine. So now let's go ahead and build the amount of chi that we're working with for our next step by doing um, what we call ocean waves or shifting forwards and backwards on the toes and the heels. Okay. So it's just right where you are. You still have your feet shoulder width apart. Now you want to make sure that your feet have not gone way past your hips. So if you're stepped way out this way, bring your step, your stance closer in together. The maximum point you'll find by finding the your your pelvic bones, which you'll poke out right here. If you just point your fingers down from that point, if your feet have gone past your hands, if you kind of peek out over the side, then you've stepped too far. Because ocean waves, you want to have a more narrow stance than you do when you were doing pulling down heavens, for example. In this movement, all we're going to do is simply shift our weight from toes to heel and heel to toe repeatedly. So let your hands come down by your side. Everything in the, in the hips up is relaxed. The only place we're really doing movement is in the feet. So pretend that you're by the ocean or you're in a pool, a wave pool if it feels comfortable for you, or you're a grass in a meadow and you're rooted into the ground, but the wind or the ocean waves are carrying you forwards and backwards. And so that's all we're going to do. We're gonna go back and then lead with the wrist forward, lead with the wrist, shift onto the heels. Try to keep your lower body um, loose and open as you do this movement and let the movement be gentle. The only amount of effort required, the only amount of tension you put in the body is, is just enough to get you to shift your weight from heels to toes and toes back to heels. My heels and toes should stay on the ground, correct? Yes, please okay. don't lift because you might topple over backwards or you might fall forwards. So stay rooted, that's why we use the analogy of a grass in a meadow, one of those tall grasses in the meadows, or a seaweed in the ocean floor. There's deep roots that go into the ground that keep you steady, yet the top part is nice and soft and fluid and moves with either the wind or the water. If we match our breath to this, we inhale as we go to the front and exhale towards the back. So inhale and fill the body, exhale and empty. Inhale, fill and exhale, empty. We're going to try to start moving up a little bit at a time. So lifting the hands further up in the front. So inhaling maybe halfway in the torso and then coming back down. And this is going to prep us for our next movement um, for Tai Chi. But we're going to inhale and fill and exhale and sink. Inhale and sink. Rocking forward, rocking backward. If you can let your mind relax onto your breath or the movement, then you will slowly start to relax and let go of any tension. Okay, let's do a few more of these. Let's do three more. Inhale up to the shoulders, exhale down. Inhale, fill up to the shoulders, and exhale down. And last one, inhale, and exhale down. We'll rock close to the hips, just keep moving. I'm gonna talk you through the next step. So, as we move into a moving Qigong, stepping, 
Our beginning posture will look like we have our hands up by our shoulders and getting ready to move. So let's go ahead and on the next one, let's inhale to that point. So we would start like this. So you may see people opening up their Taiji practice. You may have seen a video and they start at the beginning. They're like this in their ready position and then they step out and then the next thing they do is they pick up their hands and they place them on top of a ball. Well, we can get there and it continue with the fluid feeling and that relaxed feeling that we've built up by doing pulling down heavens and ocean waves and that lifting if we stay loose and relaxed while we get to that point. So if I'm still tense and tight, I might come into my beginning posture in an empty form. I might be really tight. I'm like at the beginning of my practice, haven't done any warm ups, and I come and I step and I'm going to go into it and then I just do like this. So I can still see the tension in my body and I don't have that beautiful flow of energy that's pushing my hands up, but rather my muscles are engaged. Kind of lacking connection. Yeah, so you want to use your whole body. Gotcha. It makes it easier. It's a whole lot less effort involved if we can do it using our breath and using all of, the, all of the connective tissue and all of the resources that we have in our body in a relaxed way. There's a term for that, which we, is called song. song. Like a song, it's spelled S-O-N-G, and it means really just enough effort to accomplish the movement. It means if I'm going to lift my hands, I don't have to really use all my energy to lift my hands. I just, just enough effort to accomplish the movement, song. We want, we'll, we'll talk about that more as we move okay. through. But for now, let's go ahead and start from the beginning Maybe. and just go, let's do our Wuji, which is this one, W-U-J-I, Wuji, means um, in the center. And then we'll do Taiji. And then we'll come into opening posture. Sounds good. Okay, great. Let's follow along. So bring your hands together, actually touch your hips. Bend the knees, make sure that you have space to move in. Tuck your tailbone under, bring the belly back. Make sure the shoulders are down and relaxed. And from here, take a deep breath. <sighs> Let go of everything. Sink your weight just a little bit more into that right leg. Lift the left foot and step out to the side. As Peyton mentioned, go ahead and take a look down. Make sure that your feet are um, level with each other and you're not standing sideways and that they're parallel to each other so you don't have um, duck or pigeon feet. So you're pretty parallel to each other. <laughs> Make sure your hips are still down and relaxed and your waist is pushed back. The Ming Men is open, shoulders down and relaxed. And here we are, our hands are separated and we're in our Tai Chi posture. From here, we'll go ahead and go into our ready position for moving Qigong. So we're okay. going to inhale and lift the hands, shoulders stay down, and we sit down into the hips again and the hands just rest where they were. Hopefully you can see the connection from where we were here doing ocean waves and filling all the way up to the shoulders and then simply sitting down into the hips and the hands come forward rather than letting the hands come back down here. So here we are, we'll do that one more time. Okay. We are in Wuji in the center, sink the weight into the hips, bend the knees, lift the left heel, step out shoulder width, come into the center, sink and sit again, and from here, inhale softly, song, just enough effort to accomplish the movement, and you're in your ready position. Perfect. From here, we'll do three pulling down heavens to close out our practice for today. Bring the hands down. Inhale up. Turn the palms, gathering energy from the sun, moon, and stars, bringing that down through the center of your body letting it flow through you like water all the way down to the feet and into earth. 
inhale yin and yang combine into a beautiful column of light that flows through energizing but bringing peace and relaxation into the body and our last one inhale filling energy from earth flows up and energy from the sun moon and stars flows down finish all the way down at the bottom and close your stance right back to where you started in wuji Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Peyton. I had a lot of fun practicing with you. This was great. It's yes, a great beginning. It was great. great beginning. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We look forward to working further with more Tai Chi postures and more Qigong and looping them all in together for a great practice that you can have any place, anytime. See you next time.